Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, Senior Currency Strategist with Daily FX. Today is Wednesday, January 11th, 2017. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America. And truly, all is quiet on the Western Front. We're seeing that economic calendar is fairly light uh, when we look at it for today, not just on the European side of things with a slew of medium and low UK data out, but really on the US side of things, only energy. Uh, data due out this morning at 10.30 Eastern, 15.30 GMT. So uh, when we look at the calendar going forward, we knew this was going to be the case. Tomorrow, five Fed speakers, not including Janet Yellen. She'll be talking to Town Hall on educators, uh, not really about forward guidance or monetary policy as it pertains to what they may do next, so we don't really care. But the five Fed speakers are sure to move markets, as are the two high-level events uh, data for the U.S. on Friday. Advanced retail sales and the U of Michigan confidence. Before then, we're in a little bit of a vacuum where the dollar is more or less at the whim of other forces in the market. Mainly, uh, U.S. yields, of course, something that we're keeping an eye on very closely here these next few days, as we see that we are in at support levels for both the U.S. two-year and ten-year yield. Uh, right now, although TA with yields isn't necessarily the uh, best thing in the world. Uh, I like to think that there is some sort of relationship here where if yields are starting to probe below in the near term, this 1.147 level where we had last week's swing lows in conjunction if we put in the U.S. 10-year yield and we clear out the 2.333 level, which were the lows for January and for December, so thereby we'd be setting a new two-month low. That to me would be a sign that the dollar is in trouble. And you know, seeing as how that dollar yen and U.S. yields really have been trading side by side here for the past little while. Just to make a point, I can add a symbol here, just a second. And the point of this is that right now, the dollar as a currency that's benefiting from rising interest rates is really only up due to interest rate expectations and interest rate differentials widening out. So if we see U.S. yields pull back, if it's the two-year yield or if it's the 10-year yield, dollar-yen is probably going to be hit in that event. And so in that case, if dollar-yen is hit, I would think that gold is able to rally. And I say that because if you look at what's been going on with yen and gold over the last year, they have been trading side by side for the most part. So yen strength a midweek U.S. yields should mean to lead to more gold uh, gains in the near term. 1,200, 1,210 seems like the area that I'd be looking into where we had some near-term support in the middle of 2016, recently has come up as resistance. Um, elsewhere, Eurodollar is still meandering around. It hasn't been able to break through that 106 level, and here we are back at 105.03. There's still the potential here that this is a bear flag against the lows that we had back in March 2015 and in December 2015. And from that point of view, it's important to understand that there's still potential here for a resolution lower. Ultimately, like we've established earlier this week, the preference is to wait for greater clarity, particularly as DXY chops around, particularly as U.S. yields are abating. For now, the 103.51 level to me seems of interest, although we might want to adjust that lower after price action at the end of last week. Uh, we'll call that 103.37. And if we can find ourselves trading below there in Euro dollar, it probably means that DXY is making its way through 103.64, the high that we saw carve out at the end of December before we briefly traded above it on January 3rd. In that event, dollar index rally, full steam ahead. What will we get there? Advanced retail sales on Friday probably offers the best chance to see the dollar rally. Consumption accounts for roughly three quarters of U.S. GDP. And if there are signs that U.S. consumers feel more confident with their wallets, it could probably mean that the Fed feels inflation expectations will turn higher. In that event, there's a reason all of a sudden to be looking long U.S. yields again and then all of a sudden long the dollar. Uh, one question I've gotten a few times today is, uh, the pound heading back down into the next leg of its downtrend. One thing I like to think is that 
while we're seeing more weakness in the short term, I don't think this could necessarily be the beginning of another big leg lower because we do have that UK Supreme Court appeal uh, announcement due out in the next week or two. And I think if they go for the route that that I think they will, which is saying that Parliament needs to be included in the decision to trigger Article 50, Parliament won't accept a government's uh, plan if it's expressly hard Brexit. So seeing as how we have that UK Supreme Court resolution due, I think that we may be actually looking to a place where we could uh, uh, see the pound rally in the short term. So yes, weakness here is starting to build up. Pound dollar is starting to decline. Pound yen is starting to decline. We're seeing the technical weakness set in. But the fundamental backdrop is such that A, the weakness of the last few days is purely due to speculation over headlines surrounding the government. Uh, but B, you know, UK economic data hasn't been that bad, and more importantly, we're still waiting on that Supreme Court resolution. One thing that I think should be on traders' minds the next few days is oil. Oil is behaving very poorly uh, this week. We've seen that it's lost its uptrend going back to the lows that we had in November. Likewise, we're seeing that it's lost its uptrend going back to the lows we had in August. The key reversal that we saw up on January 3rd looks legitimate. We've been waiting to see if this was truly the beginnings of a top coming out, and it looks like it may now be. If that's the case, if oil is going to struggle here, dollar CAD long at these levels as it's at its channel support may be interesting, particularly if you have a little bit more risk tolerance. Holding a stop right around 130, the two big swing lows that we had from September and October, and looking for a turn back up to the highs in that 136 neighborhood, roughly 135.80, 136. Uh, that we had back in November and again December, that still gives you a positive risk to reward where you're over one to one. And in that case, uh, you could be looking for a swing back higher here. So that's going to be one of the things we're looking for over the next few days. What's going on with U.S. yields? Any potential developments over the Brexit front? And of course, what's going on with oil and dollar CAD? Tomorrow, again, Fed speakers, five of them do up. Friday, we have advanced retail sales and you have Michigan Confidence, which should help boost volatility into the end of the week. Otherwise, tomorrow morning at 12.30 at GMT, that's 7.30 Eastern, we'll be holding the new Central Bank Weekly webinar, which is a review of what the ECB, BOJ, Fed, etc. are up to, what market pricing for upcoming meetings is, and of course, uh, what we should be expecting on the FX front with respect to potential policy changes. So uh, hopefully you can join me tomorrow morning. Again, that's uh, 12.30 GMT or 7.30 Eastern Daily Effects Live Trading Room. Beyond that, you can always get in touch with me via the real-time news feed, stock tweets, and Twitter at CVECUFX, as seen there on the screen, or CVECU at DailyFX.com. If I don't speak to you before, then good luck trading the next few days.